So the stage is set for the second informal tango between the dragon and the elephant. All eyes are on the informal summit between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping that starts October 11th. Ahead of the Sea Resort meeting, China has struck a positive note, saying that the meeting will provide guidance for bilateral ties. On India's part, however, it has not gone unnoticed that Xi, Xi will arrive in India hours after hosting Pakistan PM Imran Khan, who batted for China's support on the Kashmir issue. I'm joined by Shishir Gupta, HT Executive Editor, and I want to start off with the most important question, Shishir. What are the expectations from this informal summit in the seafront, seaside uh, summit, which is being touted by all? Uh, or do you think that that anything worthwhile is going to come out of this or is, is this going to be yet another zero-sum game between China and India? Uh, uh, see, the the last summit that was ha held in Wuhan yeah. in April 27, 28, 2018 uh, was the first of the informal summits between the two leaders. Uh, and uh, this summit again is also an exercise in understanding each other. Right. The point over here is that you need to understand where is this particular power coming from and what is its perception of it. So this exercise has nothing to do with bureaucracy. Understand that where it started from. Prime Minister Modi said that I don't want any papers with me. I need to talk to him directly on what is happening, what are my concerns, what are his concerns, what can we address uh, cohesively, what can, what are the convergences, what are the divergences. So everything is on the table. So we're not expecting any formal communique, uh, communiques after this summit is over, obviously. However, I hear that uh, Kashmir and the revocation of Article 370 is off the table. What are your sources in the in the in the government telling you uh, that that's not up for discussion in this summit, or uh, am, uh, is anyone is everyone wrong in their assumptions here? As far as I know, nothing is off the table. Okay. You can talk anything, and that's the whole idea of the summit. You can talk about you can, as I said, if if he see Prime Minister Modi obviously will not raise Kashmir because this is an internal issue. It's for President Xi to raise the issue or if he wants some understanding from it. Our point in this is very, very clear that the Article 370A was a temporary article. B, it led to the alienation of the Kashmiri public. C, all the schemes that the government had launched for its citizens did not, did not translate in Kashmir. Yeah. So all this is to bring in development of Kashmir. Article 370 was done post-1948 UN Charter. So it has nothing to do with UN Charter also. So the point in this is that Prime Minister is very clear on what he did. Now, if he raises this, then obviously the other questions are also because we can, we can also ask questions as to what is happening in Hong Kong. Why is there protest going on like this? What's happening in Xinjiang? Recently, the US has uh, has actually uh, sanctioned 29 companies right. for treating the minorities badly by the Chinese government. Right. And third thing, I'm sure President Xi is not going to raise about the mobile lockdown in Kashmir. Imran Khan. You know, this meeting uh, between uh, Modi and uh, uh, President Xi coming close on heels of Imran Khan's visit and, there, and a public statement yet again by China. Obviously, it was a much watered down public statement than what it was. You know, China and Pakistan are all weather friends. And China has said yet again that it will, you know, raise Pakistan's concerns and it backs yes. Pakistan's concerns on what's happening in Kashmir. So the Kashmir factor and viewing India through the prism of Kashmir, that continues as far as China is concerned. How do we, how do we, how does, how does, how do you think Prime Minister Modi can balance that out? See, two things. Uh, our obsession with Pakistan has to stop. I mean, if day in and day out we, have, we try and talk nothing else but what will Pakistan think or what will Pakistan China think or what will Pakistan China and somebody else think, I don't think so. This is how the country is run. Second thing is, diplomacy always reflects the situation on the ground. There is something 
in diplomacy which is called facts on the ground what right. are the facts on the ground the facts on the ground is 370 has been abrogated period right but it was china which had said that unilateral that it does not condone unilateral actions by india yes but india also said it is our, its, stand, it's right. our internal matter that's it. End of the matter. So end of the matter. So you were saying that that's not going to be a big, uh, big uh, problem as far as this informal summit is concerned. That everyone talks about what they are feeling and uh, that's see, this, no, no, no. Again, I'm not saying this is not a. This, see, people say there is a Wuhan spirit. There is no Wuhan spirit, so to. Right. There is nothing romantic about diplomacy. Understand that, please. Right. right. Diplomacy is stating your interests. So he will state his interest, we will state our interest and we will find what are the common grounds. For instance, the biggest thing, if you look at India-China relationship, India-China relationship actually has grown. You had last year, you had trade $95 billion. This time, you, you never know, though the figures are showing that the trade has gone down, that the deficit has gone up, but, but the figures are still not coming. This I'm just talking about the six-month right. figures. One, second thing, not a bullet has been fired on the 3,488 3, kilometer right. line of actual control since right. 1967. Right. So the point is between the two, there is absolute convergence that it's going to be peace and tranquility. Right. Now, the only problem is, is when China brings this third element called Pakistan into the room. Right. Now, it is for, Ch Pakistan, uh, for China to decide. What is wants to do it? Absolutely. Okay, but as far as India, India and China go, I mean, you see, the there has been an increased border patrol meetings. There has been, uh, there are differences of obviously there is no demarcated boundary, so there are differences in the sense that people sometimes do not know their crossover and which we call incursions and so on and so forth. But the fact is, all of them are sorted out. All of them are agreed to. We have a position together on climate change. We are looking to working towards with each other. If if the RCEP or which is the regional comprehensive Con economic uh, right. partnership is signed next next month, right. so all this is working out. And uh, so fine, we have a problem with Pakistan. Okay, let cut 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 it out. Let's deal with the other thing. And there's also the China's interest in furthering the India-China plus formula to sort of develop a common strategy for Afghanistan, Nepal, Bhutan, all of that. That is also a part of the, you know, a, do you think that will form a part of this entire conversation? Listen, India is far too big a country to be part of any bloc. Correct. Okay, this is one, one singular big factor which people don't realize. Why would India want to be part of a certain bloc which has a particular recommendation or particular solution to a, of an issue. Right. India's relationship with Afghanistan goes way, way, you way. No, but back China down. wants to include India in that conversation. Fair enough. China can it, no. India, China India plus, is willing yeah. to talk about Afghanistan with everybody. India is talking to China. India is talking to Afghanistan. India is talking to uh, to US. India has also a line open to Taliban if he wants right. to open it. So why does it need a third party in that way? So the point in this is that as long as it's it's inclusive. As long as it's for the Afghan people, as long as Afghan people have their own government in power, India has no problem. That's what it is. The trade deficit issue, that is another key issue yes. as far as India and China are concerned. Yes. That, of course, is also on the table and that will be a, you know, a, an integral part of the discussions. How does India, how, does, how can India figure out this situation, the trade deficit problem, $50 billion plus, um, that is a perennial problem as far as China, not just within Dutch, that is China's problem with a number of countries globally, which China has been, uh, you know, not very conducive to resolve. They've not been very happy to resolve those issues. See, the trade figures, though there is, uh, there is a view within the Ministry of External Affairs that the trade deficit has actually gone down. But the figures do not suggest so. The figures show that in all probability, the trade deficit is going to climb up to $57 billion. Yeah. Uh, so I do not know because the last figures are not in. But the fact is, since the trade deficit is big and huge, I think it is for China to address this problem singularly and squarely. This is one big problem where, you know, China needs to do something to promote trust. You see, the problem is like this, China is not moving on the boundary issue. What they could do is that there are 13 disputed areas on the boundary. They can start narrowing down the 
the, the, the differences by sorting out sec on a sectoral basis. They have not done that. Second thing, on uh, NSG, they have taken the view that India should be kept in the same company as Pakistan as a country which has not signed the non-proliferation sure. treaty. Third thing, whether it is Masood Azhar or now we have actually gone to, uh, to UN 1267 committee for uh, Mufti Rafazgar right. for his de global designation. I am sure we will be blocked by China again. Yet again. So the point is, if you are not going to move on anything, then it's a, it's a, it's a zero-sum game. But I don't think so that's going to happen. I am pretty much sure that it's going to be a movement as far as the trade issues go. The trade as well as, you know, promoting understanding between the two armies. Xi Jinping is the chairman of the military commission. Xi Jinping has all his generals under his control. He is the paramount leader. Absolutely. And so can... if, if, if they can promote understanding, if they can understand, we understand their view, they understand our view, then we are looking at, an, at a time where the borders are absolutely quiet. So from what I understand from you that at the seafront summit, basically we will see the Wuhan spirit, so to speak, as far as India, China, uh, uh, you know, their personal boundary issues are concerned, uh, as far as trade issues are concerned. But definitely that Wuhan spirit will be absent uh, as far as anything related to Pakistan or terrorism or designating or supporting Pakistan in the UN or supporting, uh, they may not discuss Kashmir and the article re uh, revocation of Article 370 uh, publicly or they may not make a song and a dance about it while they're here, but they're continuing to, you know, be that friend of Pakistan, so that Wuhan spirit is going to be absent on that. That's the sense I get from what you say. You see, the fact of the matter is, I am not saying that Kashmir is not going to be discussed. I say everything is on the table. Yeah, yeah but and the Wuhan Kashmir. spirit is not going to well, be there. Well, there is no such thing as the Wuhan spirit. <laughs> yeah. What is right now is a Mamalapuram spirit, <laughs> which is a place where actually, uh, where India has had traditional ties for, for more than about 2,000 years ago. Right. I mean, it's the Pallavas who actually uh, used to, uh, you know, have embassies in China. Right. And this is also the place which also houses the uh, the P-8I uh, Neptune Poseidon aircraft, mm -hmm. which were taken from the US, which are used for quad. This is also the place where water from Chennai also touches the shore of the western coast of US. Okay. So this is also Indo-Pacific, this is also Indochina. Right, so the Mamalapuram spirit and not the Wuhan spirit, that's what Shishil Gupta says. We'll keep coming back to you with more. Keep watching Hindustantimes.com.